welcome back. In this lecture, I'll show you how to install the Raspbian operating system on your SD card so that you can use it to boot your Raspberry Pi with. Let's start by setting up the Raspbian operating system on an SD card. Start your web browser and go to the download page on the Raspberry Pi Foundation website, which is the one that you're looking at now. You can see that this page has a few options. It gives you access to the Raspbian Jesse and then the Raspbian Jesse Lite options for the operating system. And the one that we want to go with is this one here, the Raspbian Jesse. This is the full version of the operating system. So you've got a couple of options again as to which one to download. I find it that uh, just downloading the zip file is uh, is the best and quickest option, at least for me. Uh, if you want to download the torrent, you can, but you will need to have a torrent software installed on your computer. So let's skip that. I'm going to download the zip file. and save it in my downloads folder. This process takes a while. I'm going to stop the recording here, wait for the download to finish, and then expand the zip archive into the full image for the disk. So let's resume in a few minutes, which for you is going to be actually just a few seconds. And we're back. I completed the download of the Raspbian Jesse uh, image and uh, expanded it from the zip archive and this is what I end up with. It's a Raspbian Jesse image at about 4 gigabytes of size. Now I need a way to copy the image onto an SD card and there's a few different ways by which you can do that but lately I discovered Etcher which is a little application that makes this process very easy. So I thought let's give this one a go. So go to etcher.io, it's a free small utility. Download the appropriate version for your operating system and then once it's installed, just start it. And because you'll be operating with your hardware, making changes to your to your hardware, uh, it requires to authenticate yourself. So here's Etcher, I'm just going to put this aside for now. Uh, just three steps to the process, assuming that your SD card is already in the SD card slot of your computer, all you got to do is select an image, then the drive which is the SD card slot and do the flashing. I use a 32 gigabyte uh, SD card just for it to be large enough to host both the operating system and all the images and the videos that I'll be uh, creating with the camera of the bench computer. So let's select the image. I'll go into the place where I've stored it. Uh, bench computer images. And this is a file that I'm looking for. And open. Select the drive, which for me it's a 31.9 gigabyte SD card or roughly 32 gigabytes and click on flash to begin the process. And this is going to take for a while. So again, I'm going to stop the recording here and come back when it's all completed. So flushing is complete. Etcher automatically ejected the SD card, so I'm going to remove it from the slot and then insert it back in so I can have a quick look at it. So this is what the SD card contents look like at the moment. Uh, this is what yours should look like as well. There's not much to do here for us, uh, just to observe that the files are there and that the content of the image has been transferred onto the SD card. So you can eject it again and safely insert it into the Raspberry Pi. 
And now all we got to do is to do the first boot up and therefore ensure that the SD card that we created in the prior to that lecture actually works. So I've got my 32 gigabyte card here with the Raspbian, the full version of the Raspbian operating system on it. And I will insert it. It's going to be tricky because of the ribbon cable. I'll insert it into the SD card of the Raspberry Pi. It's not easy. You've got to be a little bit careful with this. So just ensure that the connectors of the SD card are facing upwards, are facing towards the Raspberry Pi. There you go. And that's now securely inserted. Then I've got my power supply that I bought specifically for the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to connect one end to the power connector on the Raspberry Pi. Just notice that there are two power connectors. There's one for the Raspberry Pi and then the other one goes to the screen. We're going to connect this cable to the one that goes to the Raspberry Pi because the screen is getting power from the Raspberry Pi instead of vice versa. All right, and then I'll plug the other end to my power board and see what happens. Okay, so obviously the screen does work. The Raspbian system is booting and it looks like everything is going well. There you go. So the system has booted. So touch screen, I don't have a keyboard connected or a mouse. Everything's going to be done by touch. So, yeah, we've got nice touch control. This is, looks sensitive and responsive. Um, no thanks, not for now. So this is just a, a Java editor here. Okay, oops. I'm just playing around just to make sure that everything works just fine and it does look good. I've got a browser. There's no connection to the internet, so uh, I don't have the ability to browse the internet, but I'm just playing around just to see what the responsiveness is now is like for the touch screen. On the Raspberry Pi 3, I, uh, I've got to say that the speed and the responsiveness is much better than in the previous generations of the Raspberry Pi. While I'm here, what I'll do really quickly is just a quick configuration using the Raspberry Pi configuration utility, which is down here. So I'd like to expand the file system just so that my Raspberry Pi can take advantage of the full space, the full 32 gigabytes available to available on the SD card. Uh, there's nothing else that I really should be doing. Let's check. I've got the interfaces. Uh, I'm going to leave everything else for later um, <clears throat> so other than expanding the file system um, i still want to boot to the desktop uh, and automatically log on so that i don't have to provide any username and passwords before getting onto the desktop i'm going to leave that as it is now if I go to the interfaces tab, you can see here that I've got the option to enable uh, the camera. So I might as well just do that now. I'll be connecting the camera later, but uh, I'll save a bit of time later. So enable the camera. And I want to also enable SBI and I squared C and serial. Actually, I'll enable everything. Why not? Except for the remote GPIO. I'm definitely not going to use that. Okay, hit OK. And I'm going to reboot to make all these changes effective. Oh, 
Okay, we're good for now. I'm going to switch off the Raspberry Pi, just shut down. And then in the next lecture, I will proceed with the assembly by attaching the Pi Phase Relay Plus.